This is the Grow House aquaponics system, and we built it in 2012. This tank came from our previous farm in Arvada, and it wasn't the most attractive tank, but it did the job. So it's 900 gallon water cistern tank. And in here we have cohabitating Rocky Mountain White, Blue Nile, uh, Scottish Red, tilapia varieties, as well as some koi. Koi are a great combination to go with the tilapia because koi eat the tilapia poop and keep our water much cleaner. And then we get big, fat, and happy koi. So a good combination. In addition, we have some other tanks. So that's our grow out tank. This one is uh, a poly tank that we put a window in. It's a square tank, so one of the things about this is we put the air stones in the corners to make sure that we can maintain really good water flow and keep the solids from accumulating. It also has a slight cone bottom, so it's easier to drain out of that base. Our third tank we made out of wood and a pond liner, and this is what holds our juveniles. So here in the farm, we're going to look at a three-stage filtration system here. Lots of different ways to approach filtration. This is just one way to do it. This first tank here is our mechanical filtration system. This is a radial flow clarifier. So water is actually flowing in through the sidewall and up into a smaller center standpipe here, which is surrounded by this outer pipe called the stilling well and that literally stills the water so it's not turbulent, forces the heavy settleable solids down to the bottom of the tank and then we can evacuate the solids with a bottom center drain here. The clarified water then comes up around the side of the stilling well and is skimmed off the top of the tank and moves on to the second stage of filtration. And in that stage here, is uh, we have a brush filter. There's lots of different types of media you may choose to use. In this case, we're using high surface area brush media, very easy to remove and clean the uh, solid waste off. But the whole point here is water is flowing across all those brushes, and those brushes are capturing the lighter weight suspended solids, the ones that don't as easily fall to the bottom of the water column. So the brushes capture those solids and they actually perform better the more they capture. They get kind of sticky, and that's when they're really doing their job. You will need to clean them, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in water quality and nitrification and denitrification as well. As water then passes across the brush filter media here, it moves on to the third stage, which is our biological filter here. And in the biofilter, we have high surface area biomedia which is a home for all of the nitrifying beneficial bacteria that are responsible for converting ammonia to nitrates for our plant system. So we're actually heavily aerating this tank because those, bi those bacteria are consuming oxygen as well. So they're aerobic bacteria. They need to be heavily aerated here. So this is really the three stages and it's important to remember that we do want to manage the solids. We don't want a lot of solid waste getting into our biofilter. If that starts to get all over the biomedia, then our good nitrifying bacteria are going to struggle and they're not going to be able to do what they need to do. After water flows through all of this filtration and the biofilter here, it then heads out onto the plant system as great high nutrient, high nitrate water for our plants. All the water from the filtration now flows into the deep water culture. Uh, when we first built this farm, this was actually a elevated media bed system. And so we were trying to combine a couple different growing styles in the same place. And we grew tons of tomatoes, peppers, eggplant. Um, we grew melons there, we grew squash, we grew beans, peas, all kinds of things. Surprisingly, what we came to conclude is the quantity of those things that we were producing in those media beds didn't match up to our ability to grow a larger volume of greens crops. So lettuces, kale, shards, mustards, and other things. 
And after about five years of running them, we also came to conclude that they had created quite a bit of sediment inside the media. So they were starting to get thick with solids. Even though we had worms in there, we had 40 tons of gravel in that space. And that was really heavy and dense. And after five years of solids collection, it built up. The deep water culture is easier to manage in that respect because it's water flowing. And so we have the ability to capture any solids in a much easier way than washing off all that media. So we did a quick reconstruction in 2015 and turned this deep water culture, the media beds into deep water culture. And since then have increased the overall revenue generation for this particular farm by about $1,200 a month. So it was definitely a worthwhile scenario. So the deep water culture at the grow house was built out of wood. We just happened to have a lot of wood available, so we made that choice. But I really, really like the metal frame structure that we use now. The metal frame goes together a lot faster. It's a lot easier to assemble without a lot of tools. Um, and overall, if you ever needed to move the structure, it's easy to do and you can repurpose those fittings. Whereas the wood, you might not be able to keep. The other thing is with wood, you have to be uh, paint it or ensure that it doesn't uh, have rot issues, termite issues, mold issues. And it's not as easy to maintain any kind of, uh, of the food safety element because it's hard to clean. So I really do like, um, while this is our base system, this is where we started, I really love the metal structure um, of our newer designs. So following the water flow here, the waters come out of the, the filtration system. Gravity flows all the way down this uh, four foot wide deep water culture, which is 68 feet long, flows all the way up the second trough, which is four feet, down the third trough, which is four feet, and up into the eight foot wide trough. In doing so, it's made a fairly significant loop and it's passed through 9,000 gallons of water because we have it 12 inches deep and then three of them are four feet wide and the final one is eight feet wide. In this system, we typically produce on a weekly basis, anywhere from 800 to 1200 heads. And that number varies only because of the different crop types. So if we were to do a Lola Rosa, that lettuce takes about eight weeks to grow out. Whereas if we're growing Green Star, that may only take six weeks to grow out. So it really depends on your crop variety, how big you want those heads or pounds to be, um, and how you're selling those to customers. So let's look at some other features of how the system operates. This is the two-tier nursery deck here at the Grow House Farm. And its design was built around these metal panels and a pump on a timer. So water flows across the base of these plants, allowing them to wick up moisture, but as well creating a really wonderfully vibrant growing environment for microgreens, as well as all of our seedlings. These seedlings are about two days old. They just popped out and germinated. And this is the middle of winter. And these microgreen trays were seeded roughly at the same time, but within one week, or two weeks, we've got a product that's pretty ready to sell to customers right away. As we move up the nursery deck, what you'll notice is each week we have an additional amount of microgreens that are oriented to our production cycle. So we transplant or we seed about 1,200 seedlings, which mean that we have 1,200 transplants, which means we have 1,200 harvest on a weekly rotation. Here we're growing uh, several different varieties of Salanova lettuce, bib lettuce, green star, uh, and we have some other kale shards and mustards uh, that we commonly grow in this space as well. So this aquaponic system produces anywhere from 800 to 1200 heads every single week, 52 weeks a year. That gives us the ability to have a very predictable revenue model, which was important to us because at a minimum, we wanted this venture to break even, but more importantly, we wanted to show that aquaponic farming could be profitable in the right location. So we set up the model to be financially responsible, to be socially appropriate, as well as environmentally conscious, which is a great combination of the triple bottom line that aquaponics can truly uh, be a part of. And that's what business is all about.